Hello everybody, good afternoon and welcome to P1 Premium Special Training on Basic Real Estate Terms and Concepts. I am Dr. Dennis Oberabo, the Managing Director of P1 Premium. And how are you? I can see some of you already signed on. I can see Oluwa Femi Ojo, you are welcome. I can see our ED, Vera Oberabo, you are welcome from wherever you are. <coughs> I can see Chinyere Okogere Aguncha, you are welcome. Helen Awaja, you are welcome. Linda Wana, you are welcome, we are happy to have you. Victoria Joseph, you are welcome, we are happy to have you. To have you. Millicent Chendu, you are welcome. I hope you have a very productive session with us. Helen Awaja, you are welcome. Tina Shekubodo, you are welcome. Mohi Kelvin, I think that was our main guy, you are welcome. Uh, Ogbeche Choma, I can see you, I can see you. And um, Helen Awaja, you are all welcome. You are welcome. Chinyere Anukanti, ah, our ED. You are welcome. You are welcome. God bless you. Sharon Oberabo, you are welcome. Uh, Basil Vivian Ginika, I can see you. You are welcome. And uh, I assure you, by the grace of God, we are going to have a very productive session today. Uh, Mr. Edet, I am sure you can read me. You have not signed in yet, but you, I believe wherever you are, you should be able to read me. Take note of the first people that signed in and make sure you give them our signal as uh, usual. And uh, let me begin by asking you all, how are you coping with the corona, uh, COVID lockdown? I'm sure there are different ways many of you have adopted. A lot of you may be reading a lot of you may be engaging in exercises. Some of you may be learning new skills. If you saw the Facebook yesterday, <laughs> I suddenly realized that I had an in-house barber. And I've had up to three haircuts. Very nice ones. Even with pedicure and manicure combined. During this COVID session, uh, the hair is still okay, but I think by next week, I'll be doing another one. And then, of course, we expect that you've been bonding very well with your families. Uh, the normal excuse, I'm going to work early in the morning, and then you won't come back until evening time. No, you have plenty of time to bond with the family. But the most important thing is that by the grace of God, we shall all come out of this intact. No one shall be missing in Jesus name. Amen. Apart from that we are praying that God in his infinite mercy will wipe away this COVID-19 from the world. He will get rid of it the way he came it shall disappear in Jesus name. Amen. And I'm also praying for all of us that by the end of these various training sessions and when we resume activity after COVID-19 even before then, we will be having results, manifesting in alas, increasing sales, phone calls, and very productive business communication with our clients and colleagues. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> um, today, I'll be speaking with you for about 40-45 um, minutes. After which uh, our ED, Mrs. Vera Verabo, we come in to talk more about post-COVID marketing strategies and uh, also talk about our promos. 
post-COVID marketing strategies are very important because when we now resume work fully, you are going to be meeting some new sets of questions that clients will be asking you. You should anticipate and be prepared for them. That is why this training is here. With P1 Premium, you are covered. With the P1 Group, there's no limit. In our last training, let me just do a quick recap on our last training. In our last training, we discussed that the lockdown is not really a casting down for everyone. In fact, what I said that time was that one man's poison is another man's delicious meat. And that while some people are complaining that they are locked down at home, businesses are closing, some people have become so busy, having more business than ever before. Those of them in logistics, medical, food and provisions, they have become so busy at this time because they are giving free passage. Nobody disturbs them, checkpoint or no checkpoint. Online transactions have increased tremendously. I mentioned then that Zoom, the business that Zoom has done between January and March this year alone is more than what they did throughout 2019. We also discussed on why people do investment. We said people invest for various reasons, taking care of their families, their children, and preparing for retirement. But most people invest money so that the money can accumulate in value, increase in value and quantity over time. That is why most people invest. We did say that people's investment risk preferences depend on their ages. The younger people are more risk uh, receptive and the older ones are more risk aversive. But of course, it's not cast in stone. And we said that financial markets all over the world have been devastated by the COVID epidemic. And that many nations are quickly trying to do rescue packages. But you know what is happening in America now? They made 2.2 trillion rescue passage a bill and they are sending money to people. But you know what's going on? Some creditors and some banks are now seizing the money that the people are owing, have been owing them before, all those past debts. They are trying to take them, and the Treasury Department has said, no, you can't do that. This money is for COVID, for them to survive. Even if they were owing you before, you can't take the money. And with public opinion in support, the banks and debt collectors have agreed that they will not be touching that money anymore. But we said then that real estate in Nigeria has not crashed. I gave the examples of the Majestic. I gave the example of um, the Atlantic Bay. The prices have been increasing steadily over time and uh, demand is uh, not going down. So opportunities still exist for you to excel in real estate in Nigeria. And now let me ask the really pertinent question. How many of you since that time have made any sale or got a serious prospect? I'd like you to indicate. Uh, I am watching on the comments column. Uh, just indicate if you've had any serious uh, activity since that last lecture. And uh, we'll definitely recognize you and um, give you an opportunity to probably elucidate on what happened. And the Yais, and the Yaise, you are welcome. Joy Remy, Imoike, you are welcome. Odefi Oberabo, you are welcome. In fact, we have to give Odefi a lot of kudos for the technical work in making this transmission possible. It's not as easy as we think it is. A lot of work has been going on. We are using so many devices here, but I'm sure you can read me loud and clear. We thank God for that. Eziako Emanuela, you are welcome. Ah, Chibweze, Ouchi Anukanti yourself. Ah, welcome, Mo. Basil Vivian Jinika, I read you. I read you, I read you. And uh, I say welcome. 
more more how did that i read you i read you you are welcome and uh, millicent this chain do yes i've already uh, welcomed you before now for today in the next uh, 35 minutes because i've already spent about five minutes with you already in the next 35 minutes or so we want to discuss the scope of real estate in nigeria from the beginner's level because the way we see the business is that if we are going out to the marketplace as real estate consultants, we must be able to speak and understand the language of real estate. We must be able to speak and understand the language of real estate. We must use the appropriate terminologies and understand them when people talk to us about them. We don't have to start gaping. So that was what the aim of this lecture is, to give us basic understanding of terms and concepts in real estate. So you can see on the screen, basic real estate terms and concepts. You can see forms of real estate there, but let's not go too fast. Let's talk about land itself. What exactly is land? You know, or real estate. What is real estate? It has been defined as land and any attached buildings, improvements, farmland, minerals, rivers, and valuables under it, and also rights and privileges above it. For instance, some lands may have air traffic rights. It's all part of the land. In other words, in real estate, when we say land, it's not just the physical land. Anything under it is part of the land. Anything above it is part of the land. So if you are the owner of a piece of land and somebody has gone to put a 10-story building on it, that 10-story building belongs to you because you are the owner of the land. There are four types of real estate. We have residential, we have commercial real estate, industrial real estate, and then we have the vacant land, farms, ranches, lakes, ponds, etc. When we say residential real estate, we are talking of uh, land that comprises of buildings for just families to reside in, to live in, duplexes, condominiums, block of flats, where people are living. But commercial real estate, we are talking about buildings for a commercial purpose. For instance, shopping malls, offices. Those are commercial real estate. Where you have hotels, commercial real estate. And if you notice, in most of our estates, we have residential section, and we have commercial section. So we are already, we are already compliant with that. Then we have industrial real estate. Industrial real estate. We, in this case, we are talking of industries, land where we have industrial construction going on. We have refineries, we have manufacturing plants. Those are industrial real estate. Vacant lands where you are doing farming, ranching, fish ponds, lakes, etc. Those are uh, vacant lands. So all these forms of real estate and the rights and interests vested in them constitute the scope of real estate all over the world and in Nigeria. I'm sure what you are saying is a very interesting, uh, who is a realtor? Who is an agent, a real, a real estate agent? You know, these are words that we use very loosely. I'm a realtor. I'm an estate agent. But in law and in professional parlance, who exactly is a realtor? Who 
is a real estate agent. Now, a real estate agent, like all other agents, do not own the buildings, they do not own the property they are handling. They are only matching needs. There are sellers, owners of the buildings, and there are buyers, those seeking the use of those buildings. An agent just matches them for a fee, normally called a commission. A realtor, on the other hand, a realtor, on the other hand, is somebody who has gone beyond A realtor is somebody who has gone beyond the role of an agent. A realtor is an agent who has not only been certified in terms of passing his exams, undergoing some form of instruction, but is a fee-paying member of the National Realtors Association. It is recognized by government and they have a lot of protection. This definition comes from the US. What is the situation in Nigeria? What is the situation in Nigeria? It may interest you to know that in Nigeria, it is similar. It's just that it is not enforced but it is exactly the same situation. <coughs> Excuse me, because our aim is to make sure that what we are doing in Nigeria is of global standard. And of course, don't forget, Kinwa is global. In Nigeria, for you to be a realtor, an estate agent, there are one or two things you should bear in mind. One, get trained. You have to get trained. This kind of training is part of it. You can go through formal training courses. Then you get the license to be an agent, estate agent. You get the license. Get an office space. Don't be a, like a charge and bail lawyer. It's only in the police station you see them. Don't come to your office, say, don't worry, let's discuss everything we want to do here. What do you want to come up with? You'll not be here if they carry you, make with bail out. You get an office space, and then you get the appropriate technology. Right now, you are watching this training. You are listening to this training via your mobile device, internet enabled. That's some form of technology you already have. You need to send some documents to your clients. They are going to either scan and then use WhatsApp or one other means, email. That's technology available to you. So you should get that technology. In P1 Group, you are lucky in that P1 Group has provided office space for you, access to technology, and so, so many things that uh, you don't need to provide for yourself. Now, back to Nigeria, to be a realtor, there are many institutes that claim to be licensing people. It's just that it is not being enforced. But we are getting to a situation where they will become very relevant. The first one is the Association of Estate Agents in Nigeria. That is promoted by the NIESB. We shall come to who the NIESB are. And then we also have the Institute of Real Estate Agents and Auctioneers. But most important for those of us in Lagos, Lagos State Government, I repeat, Lagos State Government is licensing real estate agents. And they mean it. So the earlier we all comply, the better. In Lagos, is being handled by Las Retrad. Las Retrad. Lagos State 
Real Estate Transaction Department. It's a department in the Ministry of Housing. When you go there, they give you a form, you fill the form, pay the necessary fee, and you are registered. Don't forget that. Last retract in Lagos is registering estate agent and realtor. We also have the Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria, REDAM. It's been in existence since 2002 with the office in Abuja. That one has to do more with developers. This is where P1 Group comes in. We are developers. We don't just talk on just the land itself. We develop, put up buildings and structures. That's developers. That's their main association in Nigeria. And any respectable developer is a member of that association, which is recognized by government since 2002. Then we have the Nigeria Institute of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, NIESST. It is an association that has to do with professionals that value land. They value interest in land and buildings for sale, mortgages, measures and acquisitions, probate, construction projects, etc. Let me try and break it down. Let's assume that Guinness Nigeria Limited wants to acquire Merit Nigeria Limited. Of course, for Guinness to acquire Merit Nigeria Limited, there has to be a valuation of the fixed assets of Merit Nigeria Limited. So their buildings, their lands, all those things have to be valued. And an amount put on them. That is where the estates of the other values come in. Or a rich man has died, and in his will, he wants to give property to different people, his children, relations. They have to value the properties. Know how much this one is worth, so, so, and so. That's where you have the values. Then you have the Elzabon. Elzabon is the Elbabon is the Estate Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria. It's established by decree in 1975. It gives licenses to valuers and surveyors and uh, others in that field. Then you also have Nigeria Institute of Town Planners, NITPC, 1966. These are very relevant associations in real estate that I would like you at the end of this training, go and research more about them. But don't forget, last retract is compulsory. I will say it again. Last retract, that one of Lagos State, is compulsory. Go and register with last retract. It, they will give you a license, and that gives you professional recognition. Now, very quickly, we'll be going through some professionals in real estate. We have discussed the associations. Now, let's talk about the professionals, the people that are involved in real estate business, like you and like me. You know, from what we have seen, real estate business is not just selling land only. There is development. So, apart from selling the bare land, there is also development. So you have developers, those who translate bare land into finished structures for sale. They are called developers. And then when the estates are ready, if you go to places like Crown Estate, Mayfair Gardens, VGC, and the like, if you go there, estates are ready, but they have to be what? Maintained. The roads must be maintained, electricity available, facilities like water, drainages, all in good order. So you also have people involved in maintenance and property management. 
It's all part of real estate. And then, of course, there are professional services involved, like lawyers, accountants, etc. As we go along, you will see more of what I mean by these uh, professionals in real estate. We shall look at them one by one. Let's discuss Omonile, Omonile in Lagos, Omonile. For people, they are a terrible group. Others say they want to run away from them, but we don't have to do that. We don't have to do that. The Omoniles in Lagos are the traditional owners of all the land. But they are notorious in that when they want to sell land, they can sell land to 10 people. The same land, they can sell it to 10 people. The first one to secure his own is the owner. If you go and complain to them, they will tell you, they say, ah, ah, we sold land to you, I will be your security. Go and secure your land, Jare. If you meet anybody there, drive the person away, no call us. So. That is a money lay for you, but you can't do without them. Because you can still get land from them, make sure you register it, you perfect the title, and you are okay. Emmanuel Chinoso, I can read you, you are welcome. Sabrina Mary Iboka Ikure, you are welcome. Olori Jaid Kazin, you are welcome. Ifi Okogbo, all the way from Delta State, you are welcome. You know in Delta State, your measurements are a little bit different from us in Lagos. In Lagos, here, when we are talking of 60 by 120, standard measurement, you guys are talking of uh, 50 by 100, 100 by 100, uh, double plot, uh, single plot. You know that what you do in Delta. We shall uh, we shall talk more about that when uh, we make a seminar over there. But for now, we are talking about Lagos State and the P1 generally, uh, internationally. Apart from the Omonilis, let's look at the surveyors. They are a profession in real estate that we just have to make use of your services. Surveyors. Surveyors, if I, a surveyor is described as uh, a person who examines the condition of land and buildings professionally, and then he produces what is called a survey plan. And what is a survey plan? Please listen attentively. I won't go into details, but you'll be having an idea that will give you a working knowledge. A survey plan is a document that measures the boundary of a parcel of land to give an accurate measurement and description of the land. It is prepared by a surveyor, a land surveyor. In Lagos State, the activities are regulated by the Office of the Surveyor General. A good survey plan must always mention the name of the owner of the land. The coordinates of the land have to be there. The area in square meters of the land has to be there. And finally, the person who did the survey has to stamp it with his professional seal. And more importantly, the survey must indicate whether the land is free from government acquisition or not. It is very important for that to be on the land, on the survey plan. Whether the land is free from government acquisition or not, it has to be indicated in that survey plan. In the next slide, we are going to see a survey plan, but we are not getting there now. Now, there are two types of survey plans. Please listen carefully. We have what is called the provisional survey. That provisional survey has all the full information I mentioned to you, but it has not been registered with the government. If it's a provisional survey, you can still use it for what you want to uh, use for your land, but it is not registered with the government. Then we have what is called the registered survey, or survey with a red copy. Registered survey, or survey with a red copy. That is the one 
that has been lodged or registered in the Surveyor General's office. So when you ask a question, is this survey lodged? What you mean is that, has it been registered in the Surveyor General's office and the red copy obtained? <coughs> Excuse me. The red copy simply refers to the, the stamping that comes from the Surveyor General's office in red. It's normally not present in the one of a provisional survey. So it's very important that uh, you have a registered survey by the time you want to pursue the final documentation of your land. You want to process for CFO, governor's convent, etc. You need a, a registered survey. Then very quickly, let's talk about the quantity surveyor because this always comes up in most times. There's a difference between a land surveyor and a quantity surveyor. A land surveyor is the one that prepares this uh, survey plan I told you. But a quantity surveyor is more interested in quantities. When we come to construction of buildings and other projects, he's more interested in quantity, that is quantities of materials and their quality that will be used in construction. The quantity and the quality of the material to be used in constructing a building or a project. By the time they put market prices on them, you will now have the cost of the project. What a quantity surveyor produces for you as regards costing of a project is normally called a bill of quantities, BOQ. So, when somebody tells you, please, can you help me get a bill of quantities for this house that I want to construct? What the guy means is that talk to a quantity surveyor. He wants to know how many blocks of cement, iron, wood, etc., trees of sand, granite, paint, etc., that he's going to use to finish the building. It's a quantity surveyor that can do that. There are still other things uh, I would like us to consider uh, in uh, general terms. We are still going to look at engineers, builders, and accountants. There are people we come across in real estate. We shall see what you need accountants for later. And for the engineers, you need them in building. Architect will give you the design, but it's the engineer that will talk about the structural quality of the building to make sure that it is strong, it doesn't collapse, and the necessary beams and reinforcements are in place to make the building secured. In fact, you need an engineering drawing to get a building plan approved. Builders are the people that uh, build the actual lane of blocks, they are the ones that build, but engineers have the technical and the academic training. Of course, builders also have their own professional bodies regulating them. So don't just wake up tonight and just say that tomorrow morning I need to be a builder. It's not like that. You can see a survey plan in the, on the screen. Um, we call it a defective survey plan because there is something missing. What is missing from it is that the surveyor did not indicate that this land is free from government acquisition. He normally does that by the, form, by the way of putting a stamp on it. One that thing is missing in any survey plan you have, know that it is not a complete survey plan. And you should seek a redress from a person who prepared it. You can see the name of the surveyor and all those things, and the name of the owner of the land. You can see the area and all those things. Those are necessary things for a survey plan. I hope I'm not moving too fast. I want to make this as simple as possible. 
Now there are common terms that we talk about in this last transaction. I'm expecting the ED any time from now. I think in the next 10 minutes, ED should be able to be around to continue with our own session. Uh, I don't mind if I can get some sweets. This cough needs to disturb me a little while. Now there are some things, common terms in uh, the land that I want to talk about. GPS coordinates. You normally hear a lot of uh, questions or statements. What I want to get the coordinate of the land. Let us let us go and pick coordinates of the land. What is so special about coordinates? I would like you, all of us, I would like you to go back now to secondary school. Go back to secondary school. You know, in geography, even mathematics, we started from graphs, where you have x and y, x and y axis in a graph. You can position a point by the x value and the y value. Now, go to elementary geography, where you talk of maps. Remember, latitude and longitude. People, can I still remember all those ones? I know, yes. Latitude are those, uh, uh, they are parallel lines to the equator. They are horizontal, parallel to the equator. Equator is latitude zero. As you go up, as you go south, you have uh, the latitude increasing. Then, at the Greenwich Meridian, at the Greenwich Meridian, that's where you have uh, Ghana. I think Ghana, Accra, is along the Greenwich Meridian. You begin to have longitudes. The longitudes are the vertical lines. And so, what are we saying? Every piece of land, just like in a graph, can be identified by its longitude and latitude coordinates under a GPS system, global positioning system that the world has adopted, which means that every piece of land has unique coordinates. Another piece of land will not have the same coordinates with your particular piece of land. If we look at Oasis 2 of P1 Premium, the coordinates are 627634ME and 709684MN. That is the only land that has those coordinates. So what do we use these coordinates for? When we pick them with a GPS instrument, you can ask your surveyor to go to the state government, the office of the surveyor general, or the land use bureau. There, the government has what is called a master plan. The master plan is a geographical map of the entire state, indicating where government has interest now or in the future. You now Find out where the coordinates of your land are within the master plan. It will tell you whether the land is free or committed. The process of picking the coordinates and going to the government office to check the master plan is what is known as charting. So when Somebody said, I want to go and chart the land. What it means is, let's go pick the coordinates. With those coordinates, let's go to the state government office. Let's see where those coordinates fall in the master plan of the state government. And you will be able to determine whether the land is free or not. That is the process of charting. And it's very, very important for any land you want to buy, you must do the charting. That is what we show whether the land is free or not. After charting, I want you to also realize that under the Land Use Act of 1978, the entire land in the state 
have been vested in the government. Government owns all the lands in the state, unless for the ones it has given back to you through C of O or excision. All other lands, all lands belong to the government. That is what is called general acquisition. By virtue of the decree, all lands are generally acquired. But then we also have what is called committed acquisition. Like when you do the charting of the land you want to buy or you are interested in, you may come out with a startling result. The result may show proposed sports center, Ibejuleki, ah, ah, ah. Proposed route, Fort Mainland Bridge, ah, ah. Proposed amusement center, ah, ah. Those places are what? Committed. No-go area. They are no-go area. Sabrina Mary, I can read you. They are no-go area. That land is committed. Don't go near it. However, if by chance you were unlucky and you bought committed land, there might be a ray of hope for you if you are lucky. That ray of hope is the process of ratification or regularization. What do I mean? You may be lucky that government project plan for that place requires only 50 acres. But the amount of land committed for that project is about 100 or 70 something acres. Which means that government can still let go part of the land. You now apply to government, they will tax you, they will bill you, and then give you a certificate for that your land. In the process called ratification or regularization. I think we we'll like Jacob Wanchuku, I can read you. Thank you, thank you for coming on board. Uh, there are a few more things I would like to talk about. Um, let me just talk about um, some common titles that will come across in land. Okay, yes, some common land titles that will come across in land. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting the ED in the next, uh, is it five minutes or seven minutes? I'm expecting the ED in the next seven minutes, so I've got to rush through this. These are common land titles. I'll just mention them. You can do more research on them. Family receipt, you money lay, you buy land from there, you are lucky. All over here, they give you family receipt, and you hold that one, say that's your land title. Well, it is evident that so you bought land from some people, but it does not give you a valid uh, title. It's just evident that they took money from you. So don't rely on it as a valid title. Then survey. Maybe you bought land, you, you surveyed it in your name. It's only evidence that a certain parcel of land, you have an interest in it, but it doesn't give you a title. No. Especially if the survey happens to be uh, a provisional survey that is not even registered, is not even lodged. That is no title. The primary thing that is recognized in law as conveying title to you is what is known as deed of assignment or deed of conveyance. It is written between the original owners of the land and you that is buying. A lawyer prepares it. It is a formal document where the owner of the land admits that he is transferring ownership to you and that all his rights and claims on that parcel of land 
are extinguished. They cease to exist. You are now the new person to exercise those ownership rights. He's saying this and guaranteeing you that he has the right to do it. He is the original owner. You will enjoy the land peacefully. He signs, you sign. That is a deed of assignment. It is recognized in law as a valid transfer of title. You can go a step further by registering it. We have contract of sale. Contract of sale is not a transfer of title to you, but it only emphasizes that you have an arrangement with these people, you paid so so amount of money, they are giving you this parcel of land, and uh, it belongs to you, they will facilitate your regularization. By the time you finish payment of allocation fees and the survey and everything, they will not seek to do a proper deed of assignment for you, which is the real transfer of title. Excision, as I said earlier, all lands have been given to government under the Land Use Act of 1978. But under excision, government hands over some land, either to villagers or to families that they can use for their farming and etc. That process is called excision. It means that government is no longer having an interest on that portion of land. The family can now validly give you title on that land without any problem. Gazette is when such an excision has been published. But I think it's better I tell you what a gazette is. The real meaning of gazette is a publication by government or any ministry, but it's usually by government a regular publication of government activities that is given to the public. <coughs> that is a gazette. In that gazette, the government will mention activities of its various ministries. They are written there. So if a portion of land has been excised for a family or a village, it will be given there. If a C of O has been given by the governor, it will be written there. So. In most cases, once you see your excision or your C of O in a gazette, you will now quickly say, ah, yes, so my land, you get gazette, you get gazette. That is real, so even though it's not, gazette itself is not really a title, but it is evidence. It is evidence, written evidence in government publication that the land has been handed over through excision, C of O, etc. A C of O is called Certificate of Occupancy. It's a very good title. That is where government officially gives you <coughs> title over land. And that title rests with you for 99 years. You have sole authority on that land. Government has handed it over to you for 99 years. There's an academic question. At the end of 99 years, what happens? Will you reapply afresh for the land? Or will government take the land from you? Or will you just pay a minor fee and renew the land? The truth is that Land Use Act started in 1978. If you add 99 years to 1978, if we give you 2068 or 2070, I have my arithmetic. Please, who can give us the arithmetic? 99 years, among those of us who have signed on, this is an opportunity for you to get a prize. 99 years from 1978, what year will that be? 2000 and what? This is 2020. Nobody has really lived to see the end of 99 years old, so we don't know what it's going to be. But I'm sure some lawyers can tell us or speculate on what will happen. But I'm sure maybe you just need to renew the C of O. You don't need to go and start going through the whole process all over. 
or government will take the land from you after 99 years. I doubt that. Now, the governor's consent is that every land we see of coal, a sea of coal is given to a specific person. Every land has only one sea of coal throughout its lifetime. A sea of coal can never be issued to another person in respect of that same land. Baranijo, look, Benga, you are watching. I acknowledge you. Uh huh. Own your jewel. Own your jewel, Charles Ogbolu. Dora Gilbert, they are giving me an answer that 2077, that is when the thing will uh, reach 99 years. 2077, and this is 2020, so that's 57 more years. If I add 57 more years to my current age, okay, let's wait till that time. I will tell you and your children what it's going to be. So that is, I will, the land board said 2077, you are welcome, Victoria O2, you are welcome. And uh, from my records here, the first person to talk to us about this age is uh, Unyo Jewel. Mr. Edet, you know what to do to Unyo Jewel. You have qualified for a signal from us. Please make sure wherever you are, you are taking note. Signal Unyo Jewel. Now, for the governor's consent, even though you have a sea of O in any land, the government, government is saying that that sea of O is only for you. If you want to sell that land to another person, you want to alienate your interest in that land, you must go back to the governor to take permission. That please, I want to hand over this land to this person. I'm no longer interested. It now gives you a governor's consent. You now see that that land has governor's consent. The idea is vintage gardens of P1 Premium, we have a sea of O there, and we also have governor's consent. So that shows you that that particular estate is a very solid one. Then, another controversial title. You will see why I say it's controversial. Court judgment. Uh, this, this, this. Litigation. Brother this, he went to court. Uh, this, that. At the end of the day, court gives judgment. At the end of the day, court gives judgment and says the land belongs to Mr. A. The question you will ask, what court gave the judgment? Is it magistrate court, customary court, high court, court of appeal, supreme court? If it is high court, your journey has only started though. The other party can still go to court of appeal. And this can take about seven years. And before he goes to court of appeal, he will bring an injunction, stay of execution of judgment. As even after years, court of appeal gives judgment. He can go to the Supreme Court. Another years. So the only reliable, the only reliable court judgment as a title is Supreme Court. Any other one, they can appeal. Even Supreme Court nowadays, from what happened, from what they tried to do in Nemo State or so, it hit your hand, somebody. Supreme Court can decide to sit down and say they want to review their own judgment again. So they don't have final. They can review it and say, ah, it appears we uh, okay, let it not be like this. So that shows you how reliable court judgment as a title is. Land allocation. Direct land allocation from the government is like C of O. One government allocates land to you directly, you get a C of O. Probate award is when you get it through inheritance. Your relation has passed away, and in the will, he said this land should be given to this, given to that, and then you go and submit that will to the probate registry. They will now accept it, they will stamp it, and award you that land under probate. But of course, probate is subject to appeal. If your junior brother is aggrieved, that, ah, why should daddy give you that whole land? No, daddy was not okay when he wrote that will. He can go to court to challenge it. So these are the things involved in the common land titles. Uh, we hope we'll be able to 
talk more about them when we have more time. Now, I would like to talk briefly about the Land Use Act. The Land Use Act of 1978 was a contraption of the military regime nationwide to remove land from ownership by traditional landholders and transfer the entire land to government. The aim was to make things easy for government in development so that there won't be too much objection from communities or compensation, compared this, this, that. So all land was given to government. <coughs> now, under this, government cannot issue title to you by C or O. They can do excision, and then they can gazette all these things. It has been said that the Land Use Act is a mighty weapon in the hands of government, and this is correct. All land belongs to government. They give you C of O for 99 years. Government can use any land for the public interest. But there are limitations to the use and the almightiness of the Land Use Act. We are no longer in a military regime. The courts are now very active and aggressive in interpretation of the law. So I'm going to mention two areas where the Land Use Act and the award of C of O by state governments, they have been successfully challenged. One. The Land Use Act provides that whenever government wants to acquire land for anything, it is for the public interest. That word is very key. Public interest for the good of the general public. Sometimes, the secretarial buildings in Lagos, this is a live case, Ikoi there, Obalende, the secretariat buildings were given to government, federal government, for the federal secretariat. That was in the public interest. Federal government now went to Abuja, and there was now new federal secretariat at Abuja. A government sought to convert the secretarial buildings in Lagos to private apartments where private developers can come and compartmentalize them into flats, structures for families to come and live in, and they pay some money. Advertisements were made, and some people successfully won the bid to take over the secretarial buildings in Lagos for private residential apartments. Governor Tinubu went to court. They made a caveat enter publication in national dailies that take note, secretariat building was given to federal government for secretariat. They are no longer in Lagos. They are now in Abuja. All this one of uh, come and use it for the giving flats and residential apartments to people. <coughs> it is no longer public use. Believe me or not, till today, those buildings are still there. All those people that want the concession to go there and convert them to some hotels, convert them to private apartments, they could not do it because the purpose specified in the Land Use Act has not been followed, and nobody wanted to go to court. The truth speaks for itself. Hi, Sinta Chigozi, I can read you. Thank you. Onyechi Opala, I can read you too. 
Emeka Enebele, thank you. Andre Gilbert, thank you. Grace Okodua, you are welcome. Victoria Otu, you are welcome. God bless you all. Igbino Sadon, Osade Bamwe, you are welcome. I'm expecting the EG anytime from now. In a second way, where the Land Use Act has been successfully challenged, where it was used for C of O, the C of O's were set aside, is that government did not follow the due process in awarding the C of O. For instance, if government wants to take over land, they are supposed to give notice, publication of notice of their purpose, so that anybody that has any interest can come forward. And then they are supposed to communicate the original owner of the land, and this is what they want to do. It has been said sometimes that the wrong people were communicated, and that sufficient notice was not given, as specified in the Land Use Act. Such C of O's have been set aside and nullified by the courts. So that I just to tell you that uh, uh, the Land Use Act, even though it is there, it is not almighty, it has some limitations. It is only when government follows the provisions of the Act religiously that we are covered. Finally, finally, I've got to round up now and let the ED come in. The ED has to come in now. Uh, I want to advise all of us, please, that while we are doing this business, let's think of the legal aspect of it. Tax is very important. Please have a very good tax consultant with you. All income are subject to income taxes in Nigeria, whether personal or corporate. And then there is VAT that applies to transaction value. Right now it is 7.5% of VAT. And then stamp duty to any agreement you are making, you should pay stamp duty. There is withholding tax too. And then there is a land use charge that applies to property. If you have any property, just know that you are liable to pay land use charge for it. So I advise all of us, please get a very good tax consultant. Put your tax affairs in order because failure to pay your tax can put you in deep trouble with government. Your liberty could be curtailed. You could pay heavy fines. You could lose a lot of property. We don't want that. So uh, I will have to stop for now. Um, I will invite the executive director, P1 Premium, to come in and uh, please feel free to make your comments, ask questions, we will still attend to them. And uh, you can share this to your friends. The program continues even after this. Share to your friends and let this continue. E.G., come on, be near me. Let them see me and you together. This is E.G. Thank you so much, James. And uh, I hope you are seeing now. Okay, I will you, give way. Let us sit down and uh, attend to you. Thanks so much and God bless you. Wow, thank you so much, Managing Director P1 Premium. It's been such an exclusive training. I didn't even want to stop myself. Thank you so very much. God bless you. I want to also thank you for coming online. I want to thank you for coming online. I also want to thank you for being there for the for the, for, the, for about 15 minutes, 15 minutes or thereabout. We've been online listening to this very, very important training. And um, I must tell you that you are just loading yourself and equipping yourself to explode. I want to appreciate everyone who's been online. I want to say that you're doing a great job. I also want to thank you. Thank you so very much for staying home, for being part of the whole program of driving back this COVID-19 pandemic. I want to appreciate you for your patience. I want to appreciate you for your understanding. I want to appreciate you for just being home. I also want to appreciate you for working from home. That's exactly what we're doing now. Now, we are in a very, very unique time, in a very, very difficult time, very, very challenging time worldwide. And um, the truth about it is that uh, we have to be looking at what is going to be our mode of operation. What's going to be our business post COVID-19? 
a lot of things are going to change. Things are already changing. You will agree with me that the, this um, pandemic has, has had a lot of impact negatively on society and on the economy generally. And so, as people who are smart, because I believe that anybody, anyone in P1, anybody that wants to join the P1 group is smart. As people who are smart, as people who are proactive, what will be our preparation? What will be our outlook? What will be our response to times as this? So I'm going to be taking you on a few, just in a few minutes. I'm not going to take a long time because the other lecture was, you know, was already exhausted. Um, what what will be the impact of coronavirus pandemic in our business? What strategies? What are the business strategies or models we want to adopt post COVID nineteen? How are we going to prepare ourselves? You know, to function optimally in this our new reality. This is just what I'm going to be looking at in a few minutes. Because, believe it or not, things might not be exactly the same immediately. You know, things might not fall in place immediately. Things might not, you know, begin to function fully immediately when the lockdown is over. I, uh, there are a few people that have come online too. I want to recognize them. Ekuri Bay Godwin, you're online. Welcome. Of course, her center has been around. Chigoze, I welcome you. Then Gallant, Mekadon, and then Miri. Miri, you're online. Thank you for being online and thank you for staying there. Just hang in there. Uh, a lot is coming your way right now. Now, post COVID 19, you will begin to think innovation and re-evaluation. As smart people, what do we expect might be happening? What do we expect might be the reaction of our clients or the reaction of the world to real estate? Certainly, the price of real estate is not badly affected. It's not going to be badly affected or even be affected by the present pandemic, like it's already shaking the economies of the world. That is, that is what is good about investment. But again, we are dealing with the world. We are also dealing with people's economies. We are dealing with people's ability to bring out the money they have and invest in property. So we have to contend with this. We have to address these realities. We have to position ourselves you know, to, 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 to know and to understand that Business might exactly not be the same, you know. It might not be business as usual. So we have to devise new strategies, new tactics, smart ways to ensure that our clients continue to buy property. I am thinking that after the lockdown, a lot of clients will adopt a wait-and-see attitude. They may want to say, okay, uh, I know you're talking to me about property. I'm interested, but I, I, I want to wait a little bit. I want to see what is happening before I commit my investment. I'm suspecting that's going to happen. I'm suspecting a lot of uncertainty and fear. You know, people have gone through quite a lot, so there'll be a lot of uncertainty and fear. Okay, um, let me still keep this money in the bank, or, you know, so this kind of situation might, might arise. I'm also suspecting that uh, a lot of people might even want to put a pause, might want to put a pause, you know, on their current running investments. I'm just suspecting that might be happening. Of course, I'm also thinking that, I'm thinking ahead, I'm, I'm a smart writer, and I believe you're all smart writers. I'm also thinking that people might be a little bit averse to physical inspection. You know, you know normal, our business entails going to view a property, you know, physically on the site. So I'm suspecting there might be a little bit of, you know, resistance, a little bit of, you know, caution with going physically to the site to view the land. I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking. Yeah, um, some of us uh, will be concerned with social distancing and all of that. Of course, there's also lack of trust. You will agree with me that this COVID-19 has 
traumatized people a little bit. You know, there are people who have gone through a lot. Some may even have lost, you know, loved ones. Some may have, uh, you know, some may have gone through sickness. You know, a whole lot of things may have happened. Now, considering all of that, what would be your position? How do you fit in? Because COVID or no COVID, lockdown or no lockdown, your business must continue to run. Your business must continue to run. You must continue to make commissions. You must continue to make money because you have bills to pay. I am thinking seriously that we need to begin to reevaluate our, our business strategies for, the new, for our new reality. We will begin to look at the way we've been operating and begin to make adjustments. And the first adjustment I'd like us to make is to prepare our mind that these questions will arise. And then, if I were you, I'd like to give myself the answers to these questions, which will be our, probably our new frequently asked questions. These questions are going to be coming up. I'd like you to begin to look at them and begin to strate strategically you know, uh, look for answers, smart answers, reasonable answers to give to your clients when these questions will pop up because they are they will pop up yeah i can see that blessing is online i can see that uh, blessing amaka is online then you can uh, then you get your online charles Oboli, you're online siri Luba, you're online prince chilaka you're all online thank you for being online remain online just remain you are going to you are going to be seeing uh, you're going to be saying that it is what your why. Now, like I said, you've got to begin to work on your mind. Your mindset is important. Your mindset is critical at this time. You, you are the consultant. You're the partner. You're the one bringing the product to the client. What you think in your mind is critical. How confident you are, how assured you are that this thing is not going to affect your own business is important you've got to first of all believe in yourself that there are people still who will be investing there are people still who will be purchasing property yeah because some people are very smart they know that now is the best time to invest yes this is the best time to invest when the economy is shaking when, this, when stocks are low, you, you invest, you buy. When lands are low, you buy. So a lot of people will want to buy, will want to cash in. So you've got to tell yourself that even though everywhere, some people may be thinking, oh, there's no money, I'm still waiting, but there are a lot of people who will buy. So you've got to tell your mind that you are capable of meeting such people, you are capable of convincing such people, you are capable of dealing with such people. So you've got to work on your mindset. I don't want you to go and think, begin to think that, no, nobody will buy property now. Everybody saying there's no money. If you begin to think like that, you have already defeated yourself. And I don't want you to defeat yourself. So we're looking at those who will be winners post COVID-19. The next thing I advise you to do is to embrace technology. This is the time that we need technology like never before. Right now, I'm working from home. And I'm sure you're also working from home. Embrace technology. This is not the time to be lethargic about, about gadgets. A lot of us have laptops, we have iPads, we have phones, but majority of the time, the functions on those phones, people don't even use 30% of it. This is the time to ask somebody to put you through. What you don't know, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Don't, be, don't feel ah, they, they will laugh at me. Let them laugh at you. But what you need to know, you need to know because you need to prepare yourself. You need to be more equipped for the times ahead. Embrace technology. If you have to download Zoom, download Zoom. If whatever you need to do, if you have to learn how to operate your, your, your phones, how to use your WhatsApp, how to use your Facebook, how to use your Instagram, your YouTube to do business, you just have to learn it. Because that is exactly where the world is going right now. Now, I called a, a friend of mine and uh, she, she was calling me for a meeting, and she was honestly calling everybody. She was going to call over 100 women on the phone for a meeting. 
I said, wow, are you planning to call everybody on the phone for a meeting? I said, no, that's not the way to go. You can do a Facebook uh, publication, live publication. You can do a YouTube live publication. You can do Instagram live publication. And everybody will come online, you're the leader, and you tell us what we want to hear. You don't have to start calling everybody one by one. You'll be exhausted. That's not the smart way to do stuff. So you need your technology. Even as I'm talking to you right now, some of you, you have your team members. You can also do what I'm doing with you. You can replicate it with your team members. You can bring them together. You can have online meetings. You can have online uh, presentation trainings. You can continue to equip and you know, prepare your people. Online, you don't have to meet physically. You don't have to until everything is okay. So don't let your people go to sleep. Don't let your team members go to sleep. Sometimes phone call is not enough. Sometimes they need to see your faces. If can even use WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp um, video, WhatsApp live, whatever that works, get your people <coughs> online and get them together for time for this time. Now the next point is I want you to show understanding and empathy with the clients. You want the clients to buy. We have spoken to a whole lot of clients even now. A lot of them are saying, oh, after, oh, after, oh, after. I want you to show empathy. I want you to connect with the feelings of the client. I want you to understand or to begin to feel what the client feels. There are many clients that would rather put, your, put their money in the bank, but when they deal with you, when they relate with you, I want they see how much concern you show, how much empathy you show, how much understanding you show. They rather say, okay, let me go and get this money and invest. This person is not running after my money. This person is running after my interest. So you've got to show a lot of understanding. You've got to show a lot of patience. You've got to show a lot of empathy. Now you've got to take safety. You've got to begin to think about, about proactive ways, you know, to do inspection. Your clients can go, they, they can use Google Map, Google Earth Map to do inspection. If they are, if they're not, if they're not comfortable with um, fiscal inspection, they can use Google Earth Map. You can introduce that to them. You can do videos of our estates and send to them. You can tell them that they can go ahead and make their payment. They can always all the the property after. They are dealing with a credible company. Even if they, even if they come and say, oh, I don't like this property. We can show them another one. We can even, okay, you don't like it at all. We can even refund the money. But I don't see any property of ours that anybody will come and say, and they don't pay. But you've got to be proactive. Don't bombard the clients. Just be proactive. Don't be smart. Now, I also want to advise that you don't visit anybody post lockdown, post COVID, without a proper, um, proper appointment. appointment. So that people don't embarrass you. People are still scared, skeptical, just you know, not knowing what to do, you know. So I want you to understand that you don't go to see anybody without an appointment. And then again, the next point I want to give us is to be, be very flexible. Be very flexible. You are contending in a very, is it deep water? It's a very competitive world. The same clients you're going after, another person is going after them. So I need you to be very flexible. Listen attentively to the client. See how you can make adjustments to fit into the, the demands of the client. See how you can bend backwards to satisfy the client. It's very critical. You've got to be very flexible. You've got to be very flexible. Whatever you need to do to ensure that no business or transaction slips through your fingers, you've got to do it now. Just ensure that no matter what it takes, whatever business, whatever deal you are, you are on, you conclude it, whatever it will take you. Now, I think I want to stop here and quickly talk about our promos because I know we have spent quite some time. We have looked at the whole scenario. I have brought out promos. Like I said in my first speech, when I was when I, you know, when I started, this is the right time to buy property. 
our clients will need to understand from you that most of our estates now are discounted. The reason is to encourage them to buy. For OAC Space 2, which used to sell for 2 million. By the way, OAC Space 2 is located in Lekki Free Trade Zone. It is on extension of very beautiful land, very dry land. It used to sell for 2 million. But to make it easier for every one of us to sell now, we have put a promo on it. Buy two plots, get one free. Wow. Ah, I want us to give you one for free, one premium. <laughs> Buy two plots and get one free. Again, for Eagle Heights. Eagle Heights used to be buy five plus and get one free. But the price, what the problem is right now is buy two plots and get one free. That's fantastic. Very dry land. The estate is already fenced around the Lerem Way. It's a very beautiful land. Now we have another promo, which is uh, on our property in Nevada. By the way, I hope you know that P1 Premium has a property in a but a very beautiful property. It has C of O in a built up neighborhood. That one is selling for buy five plots and get one free. Now, don't forget we have a very hot promo running on vintage gardens. I don't know if you have seen my picture on uh, the, the video of vintage gardens. Very beautiful, beautiful estate. Very beautiful gatehouse. If you want the visual, if you don't have it, you can always contact us and we'll give it to you. The, the, the promo on Vintage Garden is sell one plot of land and get a trip to Dubai. Of course, we are believing God that this whole COVID thing will come to an end and we'll be able to live our lives normally again. Whenever that happens, as many people as sell one plot of land in Vintage Gardens, they are getting a trip to Dubai. That's fantastic. If we sell two plots in vintage gardens, you are getting a marketing car. Two plots. The price is seven million nine hundred and ninety-nine uh, thousand. So if you do two plots in vintage gardens, I am telling you, you will get a marketing car free of charge. That does not affect your full commission. Then if you do five plots in vintage gardens, you will be getting who can guess? A Venza. So that's the problem we have on our estates. Then the next thing is the King's Banquet. I want you to type the King's Banquet. Uh, if you look at the screen right now, you see the promo on the King's Banquet. Very fantastic. It's so beautiful. Um, the King's Banquet promo is, is like we have never done it before. By the way, some people may be asking, what is King's Banquet? The King's Banquet is a signature program of P1 Premium. We have done it from inception. This will be the fourth edition of the King's Banquet. It's that time of the year that we appreciate our consultants and our partners. It is that time of the day that we separate the boys from the men. It's that time of the day that we pamper and spoil our very hard-working partners and consultants, I will take them out, maybe to an exit, not to a, a, a four-star hotel or a resort, but it's a two-day lodging, and we ensure that you are spoiled freely because you deserve it. So that is the King's Banquet. We have programs lined up. We are going to be revealing, revealing the location very, very shortly. We're looking for the best of places for you. So that is what it takes to qualify for the King's Banquet. Two, hundred, uh, two million minimum is the qualification. Of course, we also have our premium residences. P1 Premium, we have houses. We're selling houses. We're selling two to three bedroom flats. We're selling um, four bedroom flats. Uh, four bedroom flats. We're selling duplexes, semi-detached duplexes, terraces. So you can also tell your client. And if, you also, if your client makes a deposit of 2 million, whether it is in the residences or in the lands, you will qualify for the King's Banquet. 
Of course, a minimum deposit of one million, we will start your client's project. And then we can plan the instrumental payment. It runs up to 30 months. So anybody can honestly get a home. So these are our promos. I want to thank you once again for coming. Uh, this program will also hold next week, Wednesday, same time, 12 p.m. We love you. Whatever we need to do to support your business, so feel free always to call, send your WhatsApp, let us know. We are working with you to succeed. Thank you so very much. This is P1 Premium. And like I will always say, I love P1 Premium. If you love P1 Premium, I want you to type, I love P1 Premium. Thank you very much. Now, I have just a question to ask before I, I leave. I want somebody to tell me the meaning of W F H W F H The first person to give me the meaning of that will get a gift w from me. H. Beautiful. Thank you so very much. Hope to see you again. Hope you enjoyed the lecture. May the Lord bless you. Yeah, I mean you you're online. If you know sir, you're online, I welcome you. Uh, thank you so very much. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for coming. Keep coming. Keep, keep, you know, empowering yourselves. Keep building capacity nice for, for, you know, for, for the days ahead. So next Wednesday, we're going to be online again. We're going to be seeing you. Thank you and God bless you.